Hi, I'm John Stevenson, and we're going to be looking at the story of the shepherds in our continuing reflections on the birth of Jesus. Our story opens with the shepherds, Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, a few things that we see here. First of all, shepherds themselves. Uh, that was not considered the most um, prestigious of professions. There was nothing wrong with being a shepherd. Uh, king David, before he became a king, had been a shepherd. But that was really because he was the youngest, and, and none of the older ones wanted to do that job. So it was left to the youngest, uh, the least prestigious profession uh, among them. And uh, so these shepherds had that duty. Uh, now, we're not told what time of the year it was. Um, there was a very early church tradition dating, I think, as early as the second century AD that says that this was in the time of December, um, a certain amount of days before the new year. Uh, that's where we get the, the date, December 25th. It might have taken place during that time. There's actually uh, folk that have said, well, no, that couldn't be because uh, shepherds wouldn't be out with their sheep at that time of the year. Um, but first of all, they, they were back then and they still are. Uh, I just checked, uh, I'm, I'm doing this uh, talk just a, a couple of days before Christmas, and, and last night it got down into the 40s uh, in Bethlehem. Uh, that's not too cold for shepherds or sheep, um, but it's also interesting to note that the Mishnah stated that uh, aside from the temple sheep, the shepherds were not allowed to watch their sheep um, in and around places like Bethlehem or or uh, Jerusalem, anywhere in the land, they had to watch them in the wilderness area, and that's just a few, if you're in Bethlehem, that's just a few miles to the to the east. And so it could be that these are are um, shepherds watching over sheep that are destined to be sacrificed. I'm not going to say that that's definitively uh, the issue here, uh, or it could be that um, in the region might have just been a few miles uh, to the east of Bethlehem, and that would have been where shepherds typically kept their sheep. Uh, in any case, we're not told the time of the year. Uh, could have been December. It could have been some other time. Um, we're just not given that information. Our story continues, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about, around them, and they were terribly frightened. Uh, after all, uh, they'd never seen this sort of thing. Remember, angels did show up to people on a regular basis back then, or today for that matter. And so they're startled in the dark of the night. Uh, here they are, they're keeping their sheep, probably in some sort of enclosure, uh, because you don't want your sheep wandering off in the night. Um, some sort of enclosure, and they're watching the sheep, sheep and an angel shows up. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I've, I've kidded that uh, in an angelic training manual that uh, the very first thing you usually see an angel saying to people is, don't be afraid, because they are, they are startling and perhaps even fearsome creatures. But the angel says to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Now, notice uh, that good news that is mentioned. Um, we sometimes translate that, that same term there, gospel, because that's what the, what the word gospel means, the good news. And here these shepherds are hearing the, the good news. They're hearing the gospel, the very first to have heard it after the birth of Jesus. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people for today in the city of David. Now, Sometimes we, uh, we hear the, the phrase city of David, we think uh, Jerusalem, which did become his city when, well, once David became king. Remember, he captured Jerusalem, he make, made that his capital. But really, the first city of David was the city in which he had been born. That's the city of Bethlehem. And that's going to be clear in a few verses. In the city of David, there has been born for you, notice, born for you a Savior. Certainly, when Jesus was born, he was born for, uh, as a Savior to, 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 to the world, to all. And yet, and yet the angel says, he is born for you. There's something personal about this proclamation, that it is given to these shepherds. And this, 
This message is for you, but the birth was for you as well. And notice he's a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, um, remember that when we, whenever we read the word Christ, that's just the Greek term Christos, which is the Greek rendition of the Hebrew term Mashiach, or we say Messiah. But he's not just Messiah, he's Messiah the Lord. And this tells me something about this angelic proclamation. It was quite theologically astute. You would expect this from angels. <laughs> they know the bigger picture, which had not yet been clearly revealed, either to shepherds or to rabbis or to a whole lot of people. But Christ is not just Messiah. He's Messiah the Lord. And this gives us a hint of the true identity of Jesus. Now, the passage goes on, verse 12, this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Wrapped in cloths isn't all that unusual. That's like saying you're going to to find a baby in diapers. That's that's what you expect. They would wrap a baby and you keep, keep that baby snug. Uh, we still do that very oftentimes today. And lying in a manger, this is the unusual part. And the shepherds knew all about mangers. Uh, after all, they probably had some areas where they could feed animals uh, when things grew scarce. But but also, you would find a manger, not only in a stable, or but you would find a, a manger very oftentimes just in a common household uh, because the animals would be uh, sometimes kept indoors. Now, shepherds aren't going to do that because they're uh, presumably having great quantities of sheep and uh, two uh, too many to fit inside of somebody's home, and uh, they didn't really keep sheep in barns as a rule. Um, instead, you would keep them in the wilderness, and you would just, if if it gets too cold, you just move a little bit further to the east, and, and the further east you go, the warmer it gets down as you get down toward the Dead Sea. Uh, but notice, uh, this is going to be a sign for you, a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now, I think there's significance there that we're not going to go into here because we've spoken of that elsewhere. Verse 13, and suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, by the way, do you notice the the angel, uh, the, the, the heavenly hosts appeared? They may have been there all along, but suddenly they are visible. You see, we are surrounded today by, I think perhaps by heavenly multitudes even today, but they are not visible to us because we cannot see with those sorts of spiritual eyes. We're we're in these fleshly bodies. But the shepherds were allowed to see something that perhaps had already been there, but now their eyes are open. And there's this heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Verse 15, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, uh, so notice they, they, they appeared, but, but now they've actually departed. The shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem. That was, after all, the city of David that had been referenced earlier. Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And so they came in a hurry, (laughs) uh, perhaps that very night, they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. We're not told, you know, was this a barn? Was this somebody's home? Uh, As we said in in another episode, uh, very oftentimes you would find a manger just in the downstairs portion of someone's house. Uh, Wherever it was, they find the manger, they find Mary, they find Joseph, and especially they find the baby. Verse 17, when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. Now, in closing, I want you to see the the spontaneous reaction on the part of the shepherds. Having seen, they cannot help themselves. They make known that news that had been told them. They make it known to everyone with whom they come into contact. Why? Because... 
because of the beauty of the message. You see, once you see the beauty of the story, your natural reaction is that you're going to want to share that with others. Remember a number of years ago, uh, Paula called me up and said, John, go outside right away. Look, look at the sky. And, and there was this glorious sunset. Why had she called me? Because there was a beauty that demanded to be shared. And if you ever see the beauty of Jesus, you will not be able to help yourself. It's a beauty that demands to be shared. 